Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Hope Community Church this morning here in North Lakeland. We're glad you're here with us in person. And we're getting closer to joining, having our people joining us online a little bit later. Uh, most of our snowbirds are awake. Caroline and I met with a couple of those folks this week before they left. And uh, they, again, said they will continue to pray for us, uh, support us financially and otherwise. And uh, we're grateful for that, as well as you being present. Really big time, because the summer's kind of a strange time here in Florida. But, uh, and I mean strange by the way churches uh, come and go. But uh, we're grateful you're here, and especially if you're visiting Annie. Um, we're grateful for those who are visiting with us this morning. So thank you so much. Uh, as we head into the week coming ahead, there's uh, some announcements I want to offer to you that is going to be great. Uh, let me see what's going on here. And the funny thing is in the back, I used to be able to look back there towards where Brian Brink is at, and I'd see a huge screen that tells me what's on the screen. Hello? Um, I don't have eyes in the back of my head, even though some people think I do. But your pastor isn't deaf, so you're, I hear a lot of things. So, anyhow, connection card. Thank you for that. Would you fill those in? We appreciate you doing that. If you need to do that, uh, update information and such. We got several from our folks who went up north, but if you have new information, even locally, so we can keep in contact with you. Uh, we want you to do that. We want you to continue to go to the website, where, again, um, we're having a little bit of wonky stuff going on this week, um, but uh, some people seem to be able to get on. It seems to be on the phones, so we're going to figure that out, but um, I know Bettina's working on that right now uh, with Steve and trying to get us together on that. But the website is really important right now because we want to keep bringing you some updates on what's going on and walking through the summer together. Next one, our D groups. Caroline will be leading that, and it'll be looking at Jesus ascending into heaven with us heading towards Pentecost next week. And so she'll be leading you through that. And uh, Mother's, Mother's Day, the students are going to be handing out you all you mothers and however you want to designate yourself, but I'm not into the whole gender thing, so um, mothers, whoever you are, please enjoy that, okay? You never know. You. <laughs> so the next one, Cinco de Mayo, we had a great night postponed for a week, but at uh, Taco Bell, and uh, I didn't go because I wanted to make sure my stomach was right, but it is right now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they had a great time, and the staff were awesome at Taco Bell. The Taco Bell up here by Best Buy, I, Caroline says she's going to write them up. Um, but again, it was a great time, and thank you so much for that. And, and this coming week is going to be our last Wednesday Night Live right here in this space. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to celebrate together. Anyone's welcome to come and celebrate the end of Wednesday Night Live as school comes to an end. And uh, we want to do that. And uh, we have a great night planned. Caroline's put together a great program. And uh, we'll look forward to that together. Uh, next, uh, next door. One of the biggest challenges we've had here is, is that we're losing our income from the thrift store because of the power going out. But Caroline's been working with, uh, with uh, our new manager who is going to be beginning very shortly. Uh, but we want to put together here is we have a volunteer team that kind of makes some things happen. And so there's the dates up there that are there. Uh, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 22nd, 20, 21, 22, 23. And so come from at that time and we're going to do a whole lot of things getting ready and hopefully very soon a reopening a grand reopening and we'll make a big splash of that when we do it i'm going to ask right now because god bless rick nelson uh he was he was here yesterday with our electrician uh rick rick 
Rick and I both have been dealing with a lot of stuff that you all don't know about. We're, but we're trying to make things happen. And um, you got Mike Cloudy texted me yesterday, how's things going? I said, that is a loaded question. <laughs> um, and I said, I said, well, I said, I said, thankfully we have 5129 still open. We've got nothing going on here next door and several other things, but we're still working through insurance companies, contractors, and our landlords. So I'm going to have Rick, and I'll let you do that right here because they want to report yep. that. Okay. All right. The owners have been, the landlords, have been more responsive. And uh, they kind of went out on their own. They at first they told us to, you know, seek someone to um, repair, you know, the damages that was done around the back. So anyway, the uh, folks that we got, we got two bids from them. One that uh, was able to put it back exactly the way it is or the way it was. But that's what Lakeland Electric wants. And uh, the problem with that, a lot of the parts and components that it would take to do that was anywhere from 12 to 18 months uh, for a lot of those parts. So he talked to someone at Lakeland Electric and with one of their engineers and said, <clears throat> tell me how you, know, you will accept it if we can't do this this way. So anyway, he worked, he worked up that bid, and, and they did. They put a lot of time and effort in, into it. And um, the problem with doing it that way, um, the parts were a little more expensive. It was more labor intense. So it was about eight to $10,000 more. Well, our landlords decided to go out on their own and try to find someone that could do this as well. Well, and, and saying that, they, um, the first guy they brought out when all this happened, uh, that they had thought could do it, was, was not licensed, was not bonded, was not insured. And just the liabilities and everything that goes along with that, you know, would, would not work. So anyway, and their second finding, they did find someone, and I can't well, I remember the name of the company, but I, I met with them yesterday. They are a reputable company. They, they've done big jobs for a uh, public warehouse and folks like that. So, And we're, we're very um, aware of kind of what we needed and the things that was going to have to take place. So. Our neighbor next door, you know, himself, uh, had kind of went out and tried to figure out a way to do it as well. He thought he could get like a tent pole, like you do with new construction or when you're doing that type of work. And I don't know who led him blindly down the road. I mean, we talked about that, you know, several weeks ago. The problem with those, you. You only get like a 110 or you know 120 voltage out of it, and you're definitely not going to run any air conditioning or any, anything like that. And Lake Electric is not going to prove it because all this out here is underground, so there's nowhere he can draw that from. Uh, everything we've got that's on the bank back there is um, cut Lake Electric to resolve any liability, cut the main line coming in which all the electricians that came out here said we wish they hadn't done that yeah. because it creates a, a little more expensive. But in their defense, they didn't want for some reason or another the power to come back on and something short out because there's a, a lot of things that have shorted out in those boxes back there and created fire. We even had regular Lakeland Electric utility people shortly after all this happened came by and said we're here to restore your power and turn it back on well we knew that wasn't going to happen so just that kind of thing so they're easy way to do it 
they take a big bolt cutter and they just, you know, cut it so that ain't gonna happen. So anyway, make a long story short, these guys looked at it, had the same consensus. Uh, they've tried to locate the same parts. The one good thing that did come out of it, they they did find the large component box that was the hardest thing to find uh, that our other electrician people have actually found it on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the next Santa Claus, you know? <laughs> so, I love Amazon. <laughs> yeah. But the biggest problem is, is all the other components that go with it. And even our other company, they were, they had some struggles finding some of that stuff. They had some of it in stock themselves. <clears throat> but e even these guys, they, they've had to reach out different places as far as Washington State to find some of these. <laughs> well, yeah. From Washington. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, there is no magic bullet, okay, is, is what I'm trying to tell you. They, they are addressing it. Um, now, now Lakeland Electric tells us that uh, we have to get an engineer involved. Yep. And so he is meeting with an engineer tomorrow. And uh, so to, to get that process started. And uh, that's kind of where we're at. And he said, I'm, I'm not, and of course it was 95 degrees out there and I'm sweating and looking for a shade and they wouldn't want to be found. So, but anyway, he, he said, you know, just to let you know, we're, we're going to stay on top of this. I'll keep you updated. And our, our shopping center maintenance guy, I was a little hard on him when he first got here. Didn't, didn't really, he was MIA last week. And I don't do well with MIA. It send me some little thing back that says I can't <clears throat> help you this week. But his wife was in the hospital for a week. And so right then I felt, okay, well, we need to pray for your wife. <laughs> Let's get that started. So, but anyway, she, she's doing better. She had a, a platelet issue. And it, it, so anyway, he, he's back in the saddle. And uh, we've got a door back here that... Um, that's not operable, and thank goodness the fire marshal hadn't come by because he could actually shut us down. But that's a major exit. Yeah, of course. So, so anyway, those are the things that's kind of been the works right now. And uh, as we find out anything different, at least we've we've got somebody that sounds like, if nothing else, they're gonna start tearing that mess off the wall back there and uh, go, go there. Anybody? Yes? Is the, is the insurance going to be paying for some of this? Well, you know, that's, that, that's out of our hands as far as that repair, okay? And that is the other thing. The insurance, the landlords have to deal with insurance people. So as far as price or what cost factor has to be proven, you know, as well, so that's between them and that. Now, insurance-wise, we may have claims that may take some legal for us to get into because of loss of income and those types of things. So we, we've got some of those bridges to cross. We're very, very fortunate for some, and maybe it was just God's will. Uh, I, I believe that things happen a lot of times for a reason. We kept the lights on here. Yeah. We could be out in the parking lot, or we could be at Pastor Burton's house. <laughs> 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 your ranch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so we were fortunate enough. At least. We got so just Thank keep you. praying, and we'll go from there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The work. Uh, he's done in being present and everything else and I think the thing I'm going to say this uh, before we head into worship it's 20 after 10 but and I'm not cutting my sermon this morning sorry um, so if you got Mother's Day reservations I don't know about that but um, 
I'm going to ask you as the pastor of the church, we have a session meeting this week. We've got a lot of conversations to have, uh, particularly about this space and place. We're grateful that our landlords are playing ball with us. The insurance issue about, and I've checked with our folks about trying to find out what our insurance has over loss of income, because we're losing money without this being open next door. I mean, Carol putting together with uh, Judy and others trying to get a team together to do the volunteers to kind of do some cleaning out there. But the reality is we're losing money. Folks, we're losing money. I need you to hear that. I'm sorry to raise my voice. We're losing money because of this. Grateful to God because, again, had we not had this place open, we couldn't even worship here. Understand that. So thanks be to God for that faithfulness that we have this space to do ministry during the week, worship here on Sunday, support our, our other groups that meet here weekly. But I'm going to say one more thing. And Caroline and I met with a couple of folks who went north who are very, very gracious to us financially and want our support. But folks, you need to step up financially. I, I, I don't do it out of guilt. I'm saying it's out of need right now. Because if we don't, if we don't <coughs> see this thing through, losing what we're doing next door and everything else, unless we step up financially, I don't care whether it's an extra tenant <coughs> or you can do more. But you have, if you want this church to continue, we'll make it through the summer. We're all right financially that way. But we don't have this next door. We have us right here. And you know what? It is great to see all of you here. I mean, we're pretty full by a few chairs. So thank you for coming. Invite friends to come. And I'm going to ask you very nicely, not out of guilt, but out of your really appreciation for the grace of God offered through the ministry of this church week in, week out that you would give even, again, in a hard time of our finances here in America, please give to help us to make us stay together as a congregation moving forward. Would you do that? I'm going to stop and pray before we have everyone stand up and greet one another. But really do thank you for your support, attendance. Your attendance is important during the summer. If you got other things you're doing, great. But if you're here in town, right here, there's two seats really nice here. I'd love to have you sitting next to me over here. But the reality is, again, if you're not, if, 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 you, if you're not away from here in Lakeland, please be here at church. We need to worship together. Pray together, praise God together, hear the word of God together, take communion together, and go back out into the world where God's called us right now in a time where the world is crazy making. Okay? And I will short my sermon by at least five minutes on that one. Okay? So let's pray real quick, and then I'm going to have you stand up and greet one another. Lord God, thank you for your faithfulness to us. Thank you for each person who is here. Thanks for those who are not here because they've headed north or for whatever reasons are going on. We pray that again that you would continue to show us your grace and allow us to respond in gratitude to the ways your Holy Spirit leads. May your spirit be here as we worship together, pray together, spend time in the Word together, spend time at the table together, and then go back out into the world because, Jesus, you called us to do it. You haven't revoked the command. Go. Go in my name. Make and call people to follow me, and I will be with you always to the end. Thank you for being with us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now take time, it's 10.30, it's really unusual for us, but would you stand?
and we feel welcome and greet one another right now. And we'll come back together for the call. <laughs> together in our call to worship, and the call to worship throughout this series on James has been the same. And this morning we talked about, I'm really happy there's a lot of people here because it's about taming the tongue. Uh-huh. <laughs> but then the other part of it is about living wisely, which is what the book really is all about. Practicing resurrection by living wisely. And we need more and more wisdom, not only for ourselves, but for our whole world and our own nation. So, as we join together, these words come from the book of James, as we have God and by His Spirit call us to worship. So please join. Let us be people who listen and then speak. Let us be doers of the word and not just listeners. Let us look at ourselves who do not forget who we are and whose we are. Let us, Let us know we are blessed by God when we do the word of God. True Christian faith listens well. It speaks well and does good before God and others. Let our worship be authentic in ways that guides us to deeper ways of living out of faith by the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. And remain standing if you're able this morning on this glorious Mother's Day as we sing our opening opening hymn, opening song. Now this is a medley this morning, so just follow along with the words. I think you'll be okay, but we're starting out with 10,000 reasons. Bless the Lord.
Caroline and I saw him years ago in Southern California. Uh, he, an, an, an honest guy, man. He, he, had, he had some demons. But at the same time, he loved the Lord and showed it so many times. And Andre Crouch, African American, has had such a huge influence on the African American church and the wider church around the world. And so uh, those words are powerful, but there are several by Andre Crouch. If you, everyone tells me they don't Spotify and do all that, don't tell me that. Just go to Spotify, put Andre Crouch in there and see and listen and be fed by him as well. Um, it, it's very good. Now the second thing, which I forgot, which is really bad. Um, happy Mother's Day. <laughs> happy Mother's Day to everybody here. Um, <clears throat> Mother's Day for me begins with my wife, who's the best mom ever. God, get she is. Service. To Mark and Claire. But I'm also thankful for a, a mom who gave me birth, <coughs> who I never knew, Marilyn O'Neill, and my adoptive mother, so Roberta. And I'm grateful for that, and I hope you're grateful no matter how you view all of that in your own lives. It's really important, so honor your mother. In a few weeks, honor your father. <laughs> They told, I was watching a show this morning, the billions of dollars spent on flowers to moms to, this week. Yeah. Second largest card giving day of the year, other than Christmas. <laughs> and it's billions. And um, so honor, because you know what? Guess what's in the Ten Commandments? Honor your mother and father. But you know what? It's the longest of the Ten Commandments other than the Sabbath. Honor your mother and your father. Doesn't mean they're always right. Any of us who've been parents know we're not perfect. We do the best we can by the grace of God. We hear sad stories of mothers and fathers who do really bad things to their kids, and that's wrong. It's evil. And yet, again, we need to continue to pray for mothers and fathers who raise kids. We have almost 40% of women in this country are single mothers. Do you understand that? The church needs to hear that. Who are raising their kids on their own. No father present in many of those circumstances are barely present. So we have to have compassion about that. So again, as we go to prayer, and always somebody grabs me going out the door, God is not male or female. He created us in his image, male and female. Many times in the Bible, he is patriarchal male, but many times he is also female. And I'm an evangelical, so don't hear that as a liberal progressive turn on your pastor. <laughs> it's the fact that, again, together, God said this is the way it goes. This is the way it rocks. And so, and we know already that if dads are gone, it's not good for families. Doesn't mean women aren't doing a great job raising their kids on their own, but dads need to step up. And so in that spirit, we go to prayer. We got lots to pray for in the world. We got all kinds of tornadoes going on here. Huge flooding in Tanzania. 300 plus as far as this morning went of a flood, a flash flood in Afghanistan. I mean, it's, and I've never heard apocalypse so much on the news because it's everywhere. It, it is everywhere. And one of my friends 
pastor colleagues texted me and he said, he said, I'm preaching on Matthew 24. I said, I said, well, Johnny Cash wrote a song called Matthew 24 is knocking on the door. <laughs> he wrote it back in the 70s. So I'll commend it to you, but read Matthew 24 because if the end isn't here, the signs of the end is here. And we need to pray. Ukraine's been devastated this week. Russia did a massive killing. And so we need to be people of prayer, especially for the church. Ukrainian church is strong. Mm -hmm. Not just the Orthodox side of it, but the Baptist side of it. The non-denominational side of it. Samaritan's Purse is all over the place. They're down in Brazil. They just took a 747 packed with relief because Brazil's in a mess. Argentina has a new govern government. I mean, again, our world is in turmoil. Caroline's one, one of our favorite singers is Sarah McLaughlin. She wrote a great song called World on Fire. The world's on fire. We need the fire of the Holy Spirit, which we'll celebrate next Sunday. Amen? Amen. So let's pray. Our Lord and our God, we come to you this morning so grateful for the world in which we live in. The world of creation, which you said is good. And we can see the goodness. Some are getting to see it in the northern lights. Some are seeing it in the beauty of the oceans. Some of us get to actually see the beauty in alligators. <laughs> and some of us see the beauty that you have shown to the world, your beauty, your truth, in all things. Give us eyes to see the greatness of your creation and give thanks and praise you. As Gerald Hopkins said, the world is charged with your glory. So may we worship in that spirit. On this Mother's Day, we give thanks that you created us male and female. That again, moms and dads are important to your economy the way of life, the gift of children and grandchildren, of generations, of legacy, of all that which you said was so important to what it means to be people of faith. In the brokenness of that and the goodness of that, we give thanks and ask that you would continue to walk with us into the very intention you have for us as your people. Thank you for the gift of creation. Thank you for the gift of the people of Israel. Revealed in the history of the Old Testament, which we have inherited as your people called Christian. Thank you for sending Jesus Christ to us to save us. Thank you for the witness of the early church and the work of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for this congregation of which we are a part, where we can join with one another, worship together, encourage one another. Many times we understand, in particular looking at our text this morning, we can either bless or curse with the words that we use. We can either speak life or death in the words that we use. And yet you have offered us the way of wisdom, not only the way in which we speak, but the ways in which we act. In the places where we have failed you, forgive us our sins and have mercy upon us. Lord, we pray for the world in which we live today. So much going on around our planet. We pray for our world. We pray for the peace of the Middle East. We pray for the people of Israel, 
our Jewish brothers and sisters. We pray for the people of Palestine and those again who claim faith in Palestine. Bring your peace. Give wisdom to the leaders of the Middle East. We pray again for, again, the relationships going on in Southeast Asia. And we pray about the war. Bring peace to Ukraine. <coughs> we pray for the church in those places, that you would strengthen it and give it courage. We thank you that they are truly our brothers and sisters. In the places where flooding has been immense, in places in Africa, Tanzania, Middle East, Afghanistan, Kenya, and for all the issues that face the African continent, we pray for the people of, the, of South America, and particularly the new president of Argentina and the issues facing Brazil and other countries south of us. Haiti in a mess. We offer it to you because we believe you are Lord. We pray for our own nation in the strangeness of our times, the divisions which we face almost daily in conversations and in our reception of the news. We pray for places that have been wrecked by tornadoes and devastation, for our cities that struggle. We pray for our own city here at Lakeland, that you give wisdom to those who again serve us at every level of our community. We pray too again for the church to be renewed. We pray for those of our own nation who've been sent to serve elsewhere around the globe, that you would be with them, protect them, and make them agents of peace and justice. Finally, Lord, we pray for our own community. We pray again for Tina and for Melody, for Lisa, for Mike, for Nina, and Norman, for Douglas, for Beulah, the Von Steinfort family, and for Sue, Dave's wife. We pray that you continue to guide and direct us and we take time now in our silence or out loud to pray the prayers that we want to bring to you now in this community called Hope. May all of our prayers be prayers of hope to those for whom we've prayed. <laughs> Lord, in particular, we pray for our schools as they come to the end of their term in this academic year. We pray again for us as we continue to seek the, the future together as a community of hope. For all this, we pray in the name of Jesus, the prayer he taught us filled with hope when he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Divine God, all knowing, all seeing, all doing, he's immortal, he's invisible. Let's sing together, immortal, immortal, invisible, God only wise. <laughs> Oh. 
send uh, our children out to spend some time with the Word of God with Caroline, and then Caroline, when uh, at the end of service, we're going to be uh, offering some some uh, special things to moms. So again, be ready for that. Uh, a great group heading out there, and may God be with them. <laughs> If you would, would you turn your Bibles, please, to James chapter 3. As you turn there, we've been looking at this series under the title, Practicing Resurrection. That apart from Christ, there is not resurrection. We are called post-Easter to practice resurrection. And today, in James, we look at the idea of practicing resurrection through speaking blessing and life with wisdom and grace. And so as we look at that together, let's hear the Word of God together. Not many of you should become teachers. My fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. I'm going to stop there for a second. Because that's one of the first verses I learned and was taught by my professor of preaching. And it's very humbling. Everyone likes to say we're on the same plane. <laughs> before the cross, but James seems to think I have a heavier burden to lift, but I also pray for my brothers and sisters who also preach and teach, and they too will face the one. Verse 2, we all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect able to keep their whole body in check. Well, who, who in the room thinks they're without fault? When we put bits into the mouths of horses, and actually the word is donkeys, jackasses, if you would, to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by the smallest of sparks. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body and it can corrupt the whole body, setting the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by, by humanity, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness and image. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. So who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy, selfish ambition, that word there in the Greek is ego, by the way, in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such quote-unquote wisdom does, does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. 
For where you have envy and selfish ambition, ego, there you find disorder, chaos, that's the word in the Greek, and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. We'll say it here. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, speak to us by your word and by your spirit. Amen. Amen. The first two verses, and I always say this too, it's kind of my way of deflecting as one who preaches and teaches, not only in the church but also in the seminary, that we need to try to not deflect from the fact that we are all teachers. I'll say that again. You're teaching all the time. You're teaching your kids. You're teaching your neighbors. You're teaching all the time by what you say and what you do. James is really consistent about that. But this in particular, he was talking to those who again are put in the kind of position I am but it's also been the standard by which we have also, in many of the churches, talked about who teaches our kids, who teaches our adult education, who teaches in small groups, who does that work, and do they, again, live by that particular standard and understanding the humility that needs to be there. And when I first heard this in seminary, I remember hearing it, and I remember the prof who taught it, and I looked, I thought, I don't even know what he said the rest of the lecture. I have no idea. I don't, I, I didn't remember, because this, this was a, it stung me. And the reason it stung me was, you know, I, I was always taught that when I go before God, and I had a conversation with a couple colleagues this week, and we were talking about this passage, and I said, I said, how do you hear this? And oddly enough, we all heard it almost the same way and applied it the same way. And it, and it was this, is that, you know what, when I go before my Lord and Savior whenever... God decides I'm done. Not done in ministry, but done. <laughs> and I go before the Lord and God, who says in our creeds, He comes to judge the living and the dead. What do I have to say? And what's, what's Jesus going to ask me? I have no problem with the main question. I believe, I believe in Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and I've tried to live like it every day since I came to faith. And I'm going to say, I want to commend that same answer to you. But the second one, because of this text, says, I'm going to be asked something else. The question that humbles me, I've now been pastor of, let me see, in one church, Wisconsin, two, Southern California, three, Minnesota, four, Belfast, five, New Jersey, six, Seattle, seven, here, in almost 40 years. And this is the question of this First triggers. What have you done in my name for the people I entrusted to you? I wish every pastor would think of that question. A 
I'll tell you when it's time for me to leave is when I don't love you. I told the PNC that question. I answered it that way. I'm either going to die. I had some of my colleagues die in their office at church, which is really scary. <laughs> Two, I die somewhere else. <laughs> Second, I retire, and I don't have a theology retirement, so I won't retire till I die. But I'll do something to continue to serve the church. Or three, I don't love the people you've entrusted to me. I love you people. My wife loves you people. And that's important when you talk about these verses right here. And I teach it in my pastoral theology classes at Fuller. Even when I teach the ministry class at Southeastern, I do the same. Because we all stumble in many ways. I stumbled. I've not been a perfect pastor. I've stumbled. Sometimes people have given me grace, some people have not. But I've never taken the last part. Anyone who's never at fault in what they say is perfect and able to keep their whole body in check. All I've basically said is, as a pastor and as a Christian, I need to be healthy in the ways God created me and created you. Your whole body isn't just this. But God cares about your body. It's about the whole of humanity of who we are. Our minds. Our spirits. Our emotions. Our relationships. Which all make us human lived out in our bodies and through our bodies. That's why it's such a big deal over the whole sexuality and identity issue. We may disagree about it, but the argument still remains the same, is that God cares what we think about our bodies and our identity. As I was talking in youth group long ago, look in the mirror and remind yourselves God didn't make junk. No matter who you are, God made you uniquely you. And part of our biggest concern right now in our culture is to help people understand God made you the way you were and are. Let's help you figure out what that looks like, even in your confusion that our culture throws at you. And the second part gets to the hard part, the taming of the tongue. James isn't really kind right here. One, one is not so kind. The other one is kind of okay. But basically, he says, he, he says, he says well, we're basically when it comes to the tongue, are we more like jackasses or not? Because we put bits in the mouths of jackasses to make them obey, we can turn the whole animal. So are we able to do that? Or take ships, for an example. Although they're large and driven by strong winds, actually the rudders and even the big cruise ships, all that's very small compared to the rest of the size of the ship. So whether you're taken out on a sailboat or a motorboat, you know, it's a fairly small part of the thing that without it, you're really in a mess. All you got to do on a big cruise ship is have those, everything shut down, and you sit in the middle of the Caribbean, you're not going anywhere. And all you need is no wind on a, on a sailboat <laughs> without an engine. <laughs> You're going to have to wait till the wind shows up. But basically, one of the questions came, and one of my buddies wrote a book about this. And uh, it makes a lot of sense in, in Pacific Northwest, and I think it makes a lot of sense here. It is that with a, with a boat, it takes a long time turn. You. 
How many of you have been on a cruise, be honest? Okay. Good Lord. Okay. God love you. It takes a long time to turn a cruise ship. It doesn't happen like this. Okay. And the only reminder you need is the Titanic. <laughs> they couldn't turn it quick enough. Even big ships take a long time to turn. Motor boats, are, motor bo boats if you try to turn them too quick, it's trouble. I've dumped one. Lake Nagawica in Wisconsin. My dad was really mad. <laughs> but it takes a long time to turn it, but that small, small rudder, that small turbine is all it takes to turn. So how does James apply it? He says, he says the same thing with your tongue. I'm going to have you do something. You won't be recorded. <laughs> Grab a hold of your tongue. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> that tongue isn't that big compared to the rest of the body. It's really big because you know what? With the tongue, like, man, it is. There's all kinds of things that tongues do that we have no clue about unless you read, which I did, by the way. <laughs> but that tongue, if it works well, man, it, it, but boy, that makes food taste really good. <laughs> I had a pizza the other day. It was killer. <laughs> it was killer. I had smoked pork belly the other day. <sighs> With Jack Daniels, bourbon, barbecue, sweet sauce to dip it in. Oh, it was good. Oh, it was good. The tongue is so good. But the tongue also has got a problem. And we got a big problem in our culture today. I've said it before, I'm not going to say it here because thanks be to God, it hasn't been a major issue for us. But the bottom line is, tongues have killed many churches by gossip. By what we say. And our tongue now is extended to social media beyond just simply conversation we have with other people. Yeah. We all know it. Many of our kids talk about hate. People who won't say face to face to somebody what they'll be glad to put in a text mm -hmm. or post on social media. And I'd like to say it's only kids, but I know it's adults too. Mm -hmm. <coughs> ain't cool. Ain't right. And it ain't right for Christians. It's not right. So what do we do with our tongues? See, in Jesus' day, the days of the Old Testament, the New Testament, and much of the church's history has said, we use our mouths when we speak. Not See, James has already talked about doing actions. But he's not talking specifically about the action of speaking. Out loud, or in some other form, what's he saying? See, that... Jesus inherited the world of the Greeks as well as his own Jewish tradition and the Roman tradition. It was that that words either bless or curse. They either bring life or they bring death. That was it. And it had a pretty wide range. One of my favorite Seinfeld ones is when they get tired of people saying after people sneeze, God bless you. And Seinfeld says, well, let's change that around. Let's just say, you're so good looking. <laughs> when they sneeze. But see, the idea of blessing is huge because blessing... When I come to the end of service, we'll do a benediction. That's a blessing that I offer to you and we join together. 
It's really to say, may God be with you. Blessing always means, may God be with you. When do we bless? We'll do it even at the table. After blessing, Jesus broke the bread. What does that mean? It means God's there. God's present. God's at work. When I say God bless you, it means may God be with you. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. May the love of God the Father be with you. May the power and presence of the Holy Spirit be with you. That's blessing. Going back to the tongue, we offer our blessing at the table. I hope most of you still do it in public because you're allowed to in Florida and not be looked at weird. Because in Seattle, many times you were looked at weird. But bless you. Here's one of our friends. God bless you. God bless you, whatever's going on in your life. Amen. But bless. Thank you for the food. God be with us in our conversation around the table. God be with us. And sometimes, I'm going to give you a thing. I heard it's a Joy FM, and I'm not a real fan all the time, but this one, it was, it was, she's brilliant, and she says, she said this, she said, if you're in a restaurant, and you're about ready to pray, you ask the person who served you, man, can we pray with you or for you? That says a world of blessing. See, we put blessing in this category where we bless people all the time by what we say. You bless me when we go out the door. You encourage. Uh -huh. You encourage one another. That's what it means to be the body of Christ. To bless one another. And we're not real happy about cursing, are we? And most of us, I use the word curse, it means the GD word. That's not how the Bible understood it. In fact, the Bible agreed with cursing. Old and New Testament. It meant God is not present with you. May God not be present with you. And we have, we're really uncomfortable with that. Oddly enough, Jesus, the only place Jesus ever, ever cursed anything or anyone, it was a fig tree. In Holy Week, he cursed a fig tree, but it was a it was a curse. It was a curse to demonstrate why people, if they didn't live fruitful, faithful lives, were not exhibiting the very love and grace of God. It was a parable of what that meant. God calling. <laughs> And not cursing, he's blessing right now. So the bottom line is, that was the world in which James is talking. He's talking about, do our words bless people or curse people? Does it give people life? Or do a little bit to kill? Don't forget Jesus' words too in the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount. Remember? You say you do not commit murder, but with your words, you can kill somebody. Amen. People love Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. They ought to read it. You can kill somebody with your words. You can bring death. Kill a little bit. I've seen posts Adults, kids, everybody, churches. I, I was reading the other day because I went over to our old church, Life Together, Life Church. Some of the posts that have been posted on their Facebook is atrocious. By Christians. By Christians let alone those who don't believe. 
terrible. Terrible. So I'm just going to ask you and challenge you with the words of James, just be people who in the words that you use, no matter what kind of relationship it is, in person or on television or on, 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 your, on, your, on your social media, I'm going to tell you, that's why Carol and I refuse. I don't care how hard anybody wants to try, we ain't doing Facebook, not doing Instagram. I don't want to know. I don't want your food porn. Lord, I don't want your comments. I don't want any of that. I don't need it. I got enough on my plate as it is. Not, I'm not judging anybody who has Facebook or any of those other sites. But the bottom line is what you post and repost is it bringing life or is it killing? Is it blessing or cursing? And there's way too much cursing and death being communicated in these days than life and blessing. And the church has a responsibility, one of the greatest witnesses right now, is to bless and to offer words of life. Amen. I wish the sermon was done, but it's not. Sorry. <laughs> because again, it says, it says, with the tongue we can praise the Lord and our, and our Father. We've been made in God's likeness. So part of God's image and likeness, if we're going to reflect the image of God, is to bless and praise God. That's why we worship. In order to reflect God's likeness back to God himself. But out of the same mouth can come praise and cursing, life and death. My brothers and sisters, we must understand this. So who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition, ego in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven or from God, but it's earthly, unspiritual, and says, as James says, even demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, ego, there you find disorder and evil practice. Disorder, the word there, is actually chaos. Can I say, that's our culture, and in many churches, that's the church. Look at what's going on in the United Methodist Church right now. We've already gone through it, and we're still going to have to go through it. That's why main lines are dying. Because of that. It's lacking the wisdom. The wisdom that comes from God. And the Old Testament is really clear about wisdom. The wisdom of God comes from the fear of God. Who is the only source of wisdom and truth. So are we practicing the wisdom of the world? Or are we practicing the wisdom of God in his kingdom? The wisdom of Jesus that comes from heaven because it is pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive. Another word we don't like in our culture. We're called it in the Bible to submit to one another. It's not one having power over the other. Full of mercy. Hello. Good fruit, impartial, and sincere, authentic. And peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Can I go back to, to one of our friends in Southern California, where Carol and I served for several years, Jack Hayford, who said, well, if you're going to try to be a peacemaker, get ready to walk, be walked on by both sides. If there's any time now for peacemakers, would a politician step forward? Please. 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 And when they do, guess what happens? They try to get, get them voted out, get rid of them, because somehow it's compromise. I hate to say peacemaking requires compromise. 
And you know what the glory of Caroline's and my time in Northern Ireland was? It was despite how violent it was, how vile it was sometimes in rhetoric, was to see peacemakers doing their work that eventually led to peace. That still exists to the day. Bar some idiots who think otherwise. And I use that word very strongly, but deliberately. It was not fun being a peacemaker in Northern Ireland, as one who was part of it. Protestants distrusted me. The radical Catholics disliked me and the group I served with for renewal, revival, and reconciliation. But it's still one of the proudest moments of ministry in my whole life. Because Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall what? Inherit the kingdom of God. Because God's kingdom is the kingdom of peace, not violence and war, deprivation. Thus endeth the sermon today. You know what I like about this too? It's like being back in the classroom. It really is. This is how I sat in my classroom. About the same number of people. It, it's got that feel to it, and I really do appreciate it because part of the thing of education right now is I'm really tired of online. I don't care what anybody says, I'm tired of online. It doesn't have this. I've looked at every one of your faces. I can kind of see Dana's way back there behind Jerry. But that's what it's that's what it's all about. So God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and grant you peace. Let's pray. Lord, thank you again for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for the witness of James. Continue to guide us as we continue this worship together. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And may we be at peace, let's continue to be at peace, as we take up his body and blood this morning for our community. Let's see together how deep the Father's love for us.
table of blessing. So may the very blessing of God be with you as you take this meal. And may God continue to give you life to the full <coughs> and life eternal. Thus ended the liturgy. Anybody who believes in Jesus Christ to be your life, the one who has blessed you with his grace, you're welcome to this table no matter who you are, where you come from, no matter what's going on. That life and that blessing is upon you as you take of the bread and the cup. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, thank you for this meal together that you blessed long ago and gave your life in order to give us life and to bless us and to offer blessing and life to the whole world. Thank you. Meet us here as we take this together. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus blessed that bread and he broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. Take it and eat and always remember. Same way he took the cup and he said, This is my blood shed for the forgiveness of sin to establish a new covenant relationship, a commitment <coughs> of relationship between God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and us as the human race. Because take and eat and enjoy together. Ask you to come forward down the middle aisle if you can, and then go back around the sideways here if you're able. And if you can't, we'll come to you where you are. But again, may you receive life. May you receive blessing. Know that you are not cursed. And death is not the end. But eternal life in Christ.
blood of Christ shed for you. you for the gift that you've given to us in Jesus Christ, the gift that we hear from you, you are blessed by me. Thank you for the life you've given to us even this day, not just to be alive, but to live life fully and abundantly with purpose and life eternal in Jesus Christ. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to stand and join together in doxology, and uh, and then I'll do the benediction very shortly. So let's join together and give thanks to God.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may you go with the light that comes from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And life and blessing is may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. May the love of God, the Father, be with you. And may the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit be with you, bringing light and blessing to you and to others you encounter in his name. Go in peace. Amen. 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 Amen.